Okay, I now have the shock piston assembly out, and this is kind of how it goes way up inside there. And I've got this rubber inner tube on there, which I said it's going to help with reassembly because the oil level is going to be above the top of the uh, shock body. Now, the way this goes, if you can see, we've got the piston here, and as the piston collapses, or cylinder as the shock collapses it pushes down so we got the compression valving on the top and the revalve bounding on uh, valving on the bottom now if you're not going to be changing the valving you could ignore this step then all you would do at this point is dump the old oil put fresh oil in and then go through the bleeding process which I'll cover but I'm going to change a couple of the valves in here to soften up the valving because this thing's pretty stiff and it's pretty harsh the, the low speed compression damping is fine and then over the, over the G outs and the, the hoop de doos and so on, it's pretty darn plush. But when I hit some of the spike little squares stuff, it kind of gives too much of a kick. So I'm going to change the valving on the compression side here because there's holes in this piston that press and deflect against the shims. And the resistance of those shims is what gives it the uh, difference between the high and the low speed compression damping. And you can go online and find a whole bunch of stuff out about that. But I'm going to do. I'm going to sign up for now and then come back. But you have to uh, take the nut off the bottom if you're going to go this far. And that's swaged or staked over the threads. And you have to undo the nut. And then you can get to the uh, rebound valving piston and the uh, compression valving. So whatever you do, don't don't mix any of the shims up. So. Pr you might have to do this three or four times until you get it all figured out, but there you go. Signing out for now.